Hi, everyone. We're joined by head coach Phil Neville. We'll start with general comments on the match, coach. Yeah, well, I think I feel, I feel a little bit uh, half disappointed with the with way the last 15 minutes went. Uh, proud proud of their efforts over the first third of the season. You know, you, you're breaking it down. We had, we had a real poor start. Uh, we had to we had to take some criticism. Uh, it was a it was a new team, young team, uh, young as in sort of like young as in, de in development, and and we had to battle through the storm in the early part of the season. Then we came, then we came into uh, <clears throat> some confidence, some victories, we started to gain a momentum, a culture, an identity, and uh, I thought I thought tonight was was a was a massive game for us, probably our biggest game in the season in terms of finishing off the first third of the season. Now before we go into the international break, uh, I think it would. I challenged before that I challenged them before the game about the belief that I have in them, but sometimes the belief that they don't have in themselves, and that I see them as a playoff team. Tonight was was that step to the playoffs. I felt, and uh, it was a pivotal moment. We had to dig in. We had to show. Uh, you know, you, you listen to them in there. It, it, it's they have this. They have this. Uh, they have this great quality that they actually they actually quite like each other. They actually like keep spending time with each other. They, when we tell them to go in and rest, they all stay out on the pitch and, and actually have a laugh and a joke. And, and that really, for me, is more important than, than some of the technical and tactical bits is that they really enjoy being together. Uh, I wasn't happy with the last 20 minutes. Uh, I'll take responsibility for that a little bit with the substitutions. I, I, I tried to inject some energy. Uh, I felt that they were on the last knees. How Motta got through the minutes that he did, I'll never know. He, he was... He was uh, yesterday. He was on his knees a little bit, but he he actually called me this morning and said, "Coach, I, I want to give it for the team." So, uh, just didn't think that the substitutions worked at the end. But I think everyone was tired, and we had to ride our luck. And I think over the the last three or four weeks, think about the little bits of luck that we have not had tonight. We had a little bit of luck, and I'm super proud of them. It's only the start for this team, and uh, uh, we we can now just breathe a little bit. First question for Michelle. Hold on, Michelle. Microphone. Oh. What does it mean you guys moved up to seventh place with this win, considering like a couple weeks ago you were 13th or 14th? What does it mean now to be up at number seven, kind of in the mix? I mean, I know it's early, but is that one of the reasons the team is seems so happy inside there? Yeah, because the five, six weeks ago, I told them I wanted to win the league. And and you know sometimes you've, you've got to set the you've got to set the bar that high that may, maybe they didn't believe it I did because I believed in them, and and they looked at me in a, in a funny way which they normally do anyway. Uh, but I wanted to set the bar I wanted to set the expectation really high. So tonight was for me is that we've got to, we, I want to get in the playoff spot. That's where we want to play our football. I don't want to be I don't want to be climbing and climbing and climbing. I want us to be stabilized and I want us to be, to be consistent. And I wanted us to go into the break exactly in this position where we could feel good about ourselves. We could feel good about our work and, and where we, we, we can get rewards for the work that we've put in and the consistency that we've put in. I, I don't think at this football club, I don't think we should be uh, shy and saying the expectations that, that are required, the expectations that we demand, and, and that is winning and that is entertaining. That is winning football games at home. We, we're building, this stadium's becoming a little bit of a fortress for us. You know, for the last two years, that's not been the case. And uh, the demands that we're going to put on them is huge. We have done already. And, and they're responding, they're responding to everything, everything I say they, that they want to do. And, and it's a great place to be as a coach. So uh, the first half you guys played uh, pretty good soccer, pretty good football, um, created some chances, got a lead. Um, but then they get back into the game off of a corner kick that to me looked like you guys kind of fell asleep on. It was, yeah. Is that what you chalk up the, their goal, Portland's goal to? Is it just shutting off for a I, second? or doing the job. That, 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 you know, the substitutions got sub, subs going on, uh, not doing their job. And, and that's why I'm a little bit frustrated because the, the last fifth, the last 10 minutes, just, just I didn't enjoy. Uh, it wasn't us. And I wanted more control. And, and, and I, I got it. I got that we were a little bit, you know, we were gassed a little bit, but that that goal give us put us on right on the back foot when it was a simple organisation of players not doing the job, players not concentrating. When you're tired, 
you've got to do your job. You've got to concentrate. You've got to do the simple things and basic things really well. And and one or two of the players that went on didn't do their jobs that we asked them to do. So that's the that's the disappointment because because that's what we asked of them before the game. We didn't we didn't want anything out of the order. We just wanted them to do the jobs and finish the job off. And uh, you know, I think I think the way that we are at this football club, we're in a good position. We've we've won a game tonight against a really good team that qualified for the final last year. But we still demand better. We still want better. And now the breaks come at a good time where people like McVeigh, Lowe, Yedlin, who, are, who have been running on empty for the last few weeks, can, can really regroup and we can get them five, six days off. Well, hey, Phil, you mentioned you weren't happy with the last 15 minutes. Do you think switching to a, line, to a, a back line of five had to do with it? Because we saw a bit of confusion there when you switched to the line to the back line of five. And what's your intention with it? Well, what were you looking we, for? we go to a back five most games. It's our CIT out system. It's our game management system. We, we I actually think it's one of our best systems in terms of the players understanding it. We worked it all pre-season. It suits the players we've got in midfield. I wanted to get control. They went to a back five as well. So I wanted wing back to wing back. I wanted to spread the pitch. I mean, really, really the goal that they scored uh, put us under immense pressure. And that wasn't because of the system. That was just because of lack of concentration and discipline. So, uh, and opportunities in the final third to be ruthless, opportunities in the final third to be three, four nil up. That's, that's the challenge. That's, a, that's my challenge to Campania. You know what I mean? He's, he scored a brilliant goal tonight. I think he should have scored another goal after that. I think Robert Taylor has got three, four more goals in him with the quality he's got. Bryce Duke's got an opportunity. Robbie Robinson's got an opportunity. Ari, Ariel. I'm like, now we need five, six players to score five, six goals this season. We're not probably going to have someone apart from Campania that's going to go out and score 20, 25 goals. We're going to have to really flood the team with goals. So the ruthlessness is what we need. Scott, next. And then we'll move over to the Zoom. For those on Zoom that have a question, please don't forget to raise your hand. Okay, let's talk about the week that you've had. You had a hard-fought draw against Philadelphia. You won against New York, two to nothing. And then you've played a team here that's... 10th place, you know, in, in the Western Conference, same amount of points. The energy I saw coming out of the gate was extremely impressive, knowing that you jumped on these guys and you had them on their heels for a while, and then you had them backpedaling. And we played 131 minutes on, on Wednesday against Orlando. Red Bulls, Philadelphia, you know, you think about the games that these guys have had. It's incredible, inhumane so, uh, uh, in terms of the minutes that McVeigh's had and Gregory's had. It's fantastic, and and we're a fit team. We we've got probably one of the best performance uh, departments in the whole of America. MLS. We've invested a lot of money. The, the ownership backed me so much, so that me and Chris could bring in the best, and we brought in the best, and we're now we I think we're now one of the fittest, and and the teams that we played over the last three, four, five weeks have been some of the top teams, and I'd say that there's no team. I thought they're miles better than us. They're better than us. We can compete with every team. We've got players that I see that can compete with the best in the league. And that's what I told them today. That's what I told them today. Sometimes you play a team and you think, well, they're, they're the yardstick. We've not played that team yet that I think they're miles ahead of us. We can compete with anyone. Philadelphia came. We went to Philadelphia. Brilliant team. We competed. We should have probably won the game. Uh, and that should give us great confidence. Well, yeah, I, and, and I, I had one last question. You're going into the break. What are you going to do during these three weeks off? You have a lot of momentum. I'm going to go see my mum. What's that? I'm going to go see my mum. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit soft like that. I'm, I'm going to go see my mum, my sister, my brother. Uh, I've not seen them for two years, and uh, I'm really looking forward to spending time with uh, for the next four or five days with my family. Austin. Congratulations on the win, Phil. I have a couple of quick Austin, ones. Austin, you've got COVID. I do. It's really annoying. Wow. I know. It was probably the trip to Orlando, but it is what. Thank you. I appreciate it. A um, couple of quick ones. First one, if you could give an update on the injury to Robbie Robinson. Uh, and then also, I wanted to ask you about the substitution of Bryce Duke at halftime and what you chalked that up to. Obviously, it worked out with Robert Taylor getting the goal, but was it an injury thing or a fitness thing or a yellow card thing? Robbie's okay. Uh, Bryce, uh, Bryce got booked. He then had another challenge. And I just felt it was one tackle away from uh, getting sent off. We couldn't afford to go down to 10 men with the state of the energy in the squad. Uh, he's going to be a top player. I didn't want to bring him off. Uh, some of his passing, 
Uh, I've got to say, he's, he's an absolute dream. Uh, we had to make that substitution. Bringing Robert on, he scored the goal, so that, that was good. But it was purely because of the... Uh, Purely because of the yellow card, and I felt with the way that he plays, he's to, he's he's a little he's a little Rottweiler in there. He can just put his foot in, and he, and one more tackle, I thought he would win off, and we couldn't afford to go down to ten men. And Alex, hi Phil, congrats on the win. I just want to talk about La Familia for a second. You know, you guys, you talked about making Drive Pink a bit of a fortress. I was just wondering how important it is, you know, to have the fans behind you guys during this win streak and. You know, how important is it to, you know, you know, make Drive Pink a fortress to you know, make it intimidating for the opposition to come over here and, and play and try to get three points? Thanks. Well, we want, we, we think, we think this, we think Fort Lauderdale here, that the stadium we've got, the humidity is our X factor. You know, people coming down here and it's 32 degrees, the humidity. It, you, you look at what it did to New York Red Bulls last week, a team of high intensity, and they just couldn't quite muster up the same kind of energy. So, you know, when I came into this football club, me and Chris sat down and Chris Chris played for the Fusion here and, and straight away he said, we've got to make this our X factor. The weather is part of our X factor. We train in it. We're used to it. We're acclimatised to it. And, and and this year we've we've made that sort of like our own. You see the players are getting stronger in games when other, the other teams are having to make substitution after substitution. Our fans are incredible. We, 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 are, we are the luckiest team ever to have such a loyal fan base. I think now what now what my my appeal to the other people around Fort Lauderdale and Miami is is get down to the drive pink because I think there's something special happening at this moment in time and I and I want to see this stadium full. We have the nucleus of a brilliant set of supporters. Now now they need to tell their friends and their brothers and sisters and their aunties and uncles and we want to make this next home games against Minnesota. We want to fill the stadium. We want, we, want, we want the stadium full. We want it to be rocking like it is because this stadium is intimidating, you know, with the lights and the songs and the, and the way that they never stop chanting is, 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 is our number, number one best thing. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's what the, the players love doing, playing at home. One more for Michelle on this last question. Yeah. Um, and you said when he got here, he wanted to score a goal to be noticed by the Ecuadorian coach. Can you just talk about him right now, where he is? Again? We're super pleased. We're, yeah, we're super pleased with him. The, the Ecuadorian coach came two weeks ago, had had uh, watched us train, had lunch with me, Chris and Leo. Uh, loves the kid. He loves him, and you do. You, you, when you when you meet Leo, you fall in love with him because of his personality, his, his nature. He's the politest, most humble boy. He's obviously been brought up the right way. Uh, and, and he's scoring goals. And our number nine at this moment in time is banging form. And, uh, you know, he's, he's really highly thought of. I think there's so much growth left in him. He was angry to come off today, which I like. He was like, yeah, yeah. He only looked at me with one eye, which was, which was quite funny. Uh, but, but it's part of his development. You know, he's had a tough, tough couple of weeks and we wanted freshness on with Gonzalo. And... Uh, He's going to be really good for us. And, and, and now it's his reward to go away with the national team. He's playing in America, so he's not much travel. And, and we wish him all the best. And we, we hope he gets his opportunity to make his Ecuadorian, uh, you know, international debut, I think it is. It has he played for the national team? Yeah, so, so okay. Uh, we hope he, he scores goals. Thanks, Coach.